Hey everybody, before I get started, I just wanted to mention a couple of ways that you can engage with me on a more personal level. I have a few avenues set up and I keep focusing on one and I figured, why don't I make a short little video talking about all of them real quick before we get into these uh, episodes. So first thing, Patreon. There's a link in the episode description and every episode description to the Patreon, as well as uh, a video on the feed called Major Announcement that has all the details of what each tier offers and how much they cost. I implore you to check that out. I offer a lot of cool shit for my patrons. Uh, second thing, the Discord channel. There's also a Discord link in the episode description and in every episode description. I have multiple channels set up there for each show that I'm covering, and it's a great way to just engage with me. I have a channel set up for uh, uh, MMA talk as well. I'm a big MMA fan, so if you're an MMA fan, you can check that out as well. There's a link to the Discord in the episode description. And then lastly, oh, the Facebook and Twitter. Social media. Follow me on there. I post news on there. When I say news, I mean like, hey, I'm stopping covering this show. Hey, I'm starting covering this show. Let me know what you think about this. I do uh, live watches of things on Facebook where like I'll check in and say, I'm watching so-and-so show. And then I'll like live comment while I'm watching it. And that'll be cool if maybe you watch that show too and you want to watch along with me or you're watching it later and you want to see my thoughts, which are usually pretty entertaining because I'm usually pretty high when I'm writing them. So uh, check out all those links in each episode description and let's talk about this episode. Peace. One mic, one mic. Yeah. All I need is one mic. One mic. Yeah. All I need is one mic. Hey everybody, welcome back to One Mic. And today I'm here to talk about episodes one and two, the season three premieres of Apple TV's Slow Horses. Uh, this is one of my low-key uh, favorite shows. I'm glad it's back for another six episodes, and I am excited because this show is such a treat for me. Uh, I, I love this show because it knows what it needs to do, and it does it well. You know, it gets in, it tells a dope six-episode story, it gets the fuck out, and then it comes right back next year with another dope six-episode story because it doesn't require a lot to make this show. Like, you know, it's a, it's a pretty simple show. It doesn't require a huge budget or fancy special effects. It just has great actors telling a compelling story with a ton of well-written twists and turns, and it already has a shit ton of source material written by somebody else to draw from. So it's kind of like impossible to fail. Like, you know, like if you know you like what you got, which I do, and, and from the show's perspective, if you know you like the content that you're drawing from the books, and there's a shit ton of books... Like, there's no reason for me to think that I'm ever going to get a bad season of this show. So, of course, I'm going to be excited when it comes back. This show is like uh, comfort food. It's easy to make, it's reliable, and it always hits the spot. Uh, so, uh, these first two episodes were kind of just like the first two in previous seasons. They introduced us to the season's central mystery that will undoubtedly unravel into a huge fucking deal. Uh, that would seem, uh, at least to those at the park, to be something that's probably quite a bit above Slough House's pay grade. Uh, my only complaint about these first two episodes actually is the mystery or not the mystery, but the amount of it that we've received so far. Like I'm 100% certain it's going to unravel into something wildly compelling. But like, as of right now, all we know is that someone wants some important files and that, <laughs> and that plot line doesn't really leap off the page or the screen. Uh, but like I said, I'm sure it's, I'm sure it's going to go somewhere way, way, way more interesting than wh where it has so far. I just feel like the first two seasons got off to a better start with those first with these first two episodes. But still, this is a really fun and, and great pair of episodes. I'm excited to talk about what happened, what our favorite agents are up to, and where it looks like this story's going. So uh, let's get started. And the premiere opens with a really exciting cold open in Istanbul, where we meet Sean, paid played by Chope Derisu. And Allison, played by a much easier to pronounce, Catherine Waterston. <laughs> I really worked on Shopei Derisu. <laughs> so I really hope you, I, I hope you watch it, man. And if I didn't fuck it up, <laughs> put it in the comments like, my guy, I know my name is hard for y'all Americans. So I'm glad you got it, bro. But hopefully I was at least close. Uh, but I enjoyed watching both of these actors earlier this year. Uh, Shopei on um, Gangs of London and Catherine on season two of Perry Mason, both uh, really great seasons of television. Uh, I'm not 100% sure Gangs of London was this year. I actually might have been last year, 2022, but uh, Perry Mason was definitely this year, and, and it's going to be, it'll be brought up in my best of 2023 uh, video in January. Uh, but uh, we meet Sean and Allison. They seem to be a regular happy couple at first, but we quickly under, come to understand that they are both spies. 
Uh, Sean's caught looking for a file called Footprint that he suspects Allison is going to leak to the press. Uh, she gets all, all huffy and, uh, and offended, like, how dare you search through my shit, you spy. And she kicks him out, only to pull the file out of a bowl of chickpeas and be like, all right, got to escalate this shit, got to deliver this right now. And then, of course, he's a spy, too. He's a good one, just like she is. And he's, he suspects that she's full of shit, and he was waiting for her to leave. She leaves. He follows her. And then we are treated to, I shit you not. A boat chase that leads to a foot chase that leads to a car chase that ends up at an empty stadium. <laughs> I w and it was fun. I enjoyed it. And each part was really kind of short. Like, like, I can't say that there was a boat chase scene. Like, it didn't feel that long. It had the one moment where they cut across the big tanker. That was cool. The foot chase is brief. Um, it, and it's not really... A, I think it's like a foot chase in the... Like, uh, she was in a car, and I think he was... Yeah, she was in a car, and he wasn't. And then he steals a car and it becomes a car chase. Uh, yeah, it was it was a lot, but it was fun. Uh, Allison delivers the file to someone and says to get it out to the world. But when Sean arrives, uh, he learns that Allison has been delivered to the afterlife. And whatever is going to happen with that file isn't going to be what Allison intended. So yeah, uh, pretty sick cold open. Um, a year later, little has changed at Slough House from the last time we saw all of our, our favorite agents. Jackson's still the healthiest, poorly conditioned person alive. I loved how uh, when the doctor told him that the maximum amount he's allowed to drink is 14 units, not only did he say to just put that, but he didn't even question what a unit was. And then the doctor's like, I can't lie about it. He's like, you're not lying. I am. I told you 14. Write it down. <laughs> like, I love I love that scene. Uh, Louisa is still mourning the loss of men and is apparently willing to hook up with the least of humanity. Uh, well, not the very, very least of humanity because she still won't give Roddy any. Uh, and Roddy's really trying to put in some work to uh, to win her over. I, I mean, she is fine. I feel him. But, I mean, like, but uh, she's, not, she's not giving Roddy none, at least not yet. Uh, we learned, though, that Louisa has uh, stolen diamonds from uh, last season's finale and is storing them in her ice cream. Now, I don't know about you guys, but the dynamic between Louisa and the guy that she hooked up with was very similar to the dynamic between Sean and Allison in the cold open. Then this, this, the guy that, that, that Louisa is with just randomly bumps into her at the scene where Standish was kidnapped, and that causes the car that that white lady was using to distract Standish to get towed. Nah, uh, you can't pull a fast one on me, slow horses. That motherfucker's a spy. Like, he was looking for those diamonds, just like Sean was looking for that file, and he was there at that location where Standish got kidnapped on purpose. You cannot fool me, slow horses. I'm on to you. Uh, but moving on, uh, last year's new recruits, Marcus and Shirley, they're still on the team. Uh, Jackson refers to them as little and large, which I thought was just I, simple, but... Simple but effective. Uh, they don't get to do too much in these first two episodes, but they do talk about forming something of a team. Uh, they have a nice scene where uh, Roddy and Lamb use a fake 999 call to sniff out sniff out someone who's uh, outside watching Slough House. And then he has Little and Large follow this guy. And I liked how Large was doing this thing where he called it following in front. I, I thought that was actually kind of clever until he got made and dude escaped. But, <laughs> but I don't know. I liked it when I first saw it. I, they haven't large slash Marcus hasn't quite grown on me yet. I'm starting to like Shirley. Um, I really like what she slapped Roddy in this episode, but I mean, in whichever episode it was, but um, yeah, I don't, I, I, Marcus, they need to do a little bit more work with him and Shirley uh, pairing them up could be uh, useful just like they did with uh, men and Louisa. So uh, yeah, I think, I think they'll probably get a little bit more to do now that they are, are you know, seemingly with the team full time. So mm, excuse me. Uh, Standish and River, uh, they're dealing with a new menial task that the park is assigned to them, which is essentially to just be uh, human filing systems and manage and store their Ringo-level files, which is the bottom of the fucking barrel files. Which, I mean, obviously I'm not from England, but I, I, I would have thought, assumed that that kind of slander of Ringo would not be tolerated. Like, I figured no Beatles slander was tolerated, but that's clearly Ringo shade. Like, I, I, I don't know. I... I'll, they would know better than I would, the people who make the show, but that kind of surprised me. I wonder which of the Beatles is like the the like the like A-tier file. Like, I think there's a scene where Taverner, when she's at the file place that she's at, where she's it seems like she's been reduced to a task similar to what Slough House is doing, just with higher level files. 
I think they called her files like the John and Paul files, I think. So, but like, and if that's true, which one, John or Paul, is considered to be the like the top tier one? Like if Ringo's last, and I think the guy who uh who run that runs that storage area said that George was second to last. Yeah, I, I want to know how John and Paul are, are ranked there. And also that guy who ran the this file storage place, that motherfucker was adorable. <laughs> like, I'm gonna I'm gonna need Diana to make two more trips there minimum. Uh, this season, because that guy was that guy was uh, fun to watch, man. <laughs> he would annoy the fuck out of me in real life, but he was a, he was fun to watch uh, in the episode. But uh, moving on, we see that Sean is now attending. Uh, it's been a while, moment since I talked about Sean. That, that's Showface character is now attending Stanish's AA meetings, and someone is also someone different is following Lamb, which of course he immediately catches on to. Uh, Sean and some others eventually capture and kidnap Standish, but she manages to uh, intentionally leave a hair clip behind because if we were to rank the agents uh, from top to bottom in Slough House, Jackson would be number one still, but Standish would be like 1B. Uh, Jackson immediately noticed he's missing because obviously he's number one spy, but also because there's no one there to give him more hand soap to shower with. Um, he sends everyone to various locations, and Louisa is able to kind of like retrace Catherine's footsteps through her uh, kidnapping location where she finds Sean's address in the car that the guy who is 100% a spy <laughs> trying to distract her from finding. Uh, River ends up being sent to steal a file from the park, uh, or Catherine and Spider's family, uh, they're going to die. Episode 2 mostly follows River uh, River's uh, quest to retrieve this file from the park. Uh, he snatches a, a, a fake diamond out of uh, out of Spider's tie clip, and he uses that to kind of bribe his way into the park uh, via getting a meeting with his his uh, one of one of his several mortal enemies, Duffy. He makes his way eventually all the way to the room that presumably has the file that he's been sent there to retrieve. But uh, as it looks like he might possibly be able to talk his way into getting it, uh, Jackson seems to have figured out that Standish has likely been taken by some security firm or tiger team, as he calls it, uh, called Chieftain. And he orders, uh, he orders River to get the fuck out of there, which River su successfully does. So now we're left to wonder about the significance of what appears to be multiple files. Uh, what they have to do with Standish, or if Standish is solely being used to get to Jackson, what they have to do with him, and who this Tiger team is, uh, what their goals are, who hired them, all this kind of stuff. Uh, I don't find this, pl this plot line to be nearly as compelling yet, like I said at the top, uh, as the plot line in the first two episodes of the first two seasons, but like I said, this show moves quickly, it packs a lot into each episode, so I'm very confident, 100% confident that this is going to become something that I love just like the first two seasons. And again, I'm not shitting. I enjoyed these first two episodes. I'm just saying, like, if I had to rank them, these two would be the, thir the third. But, like, again, you can be the third best uh, pairing of Slow Horses episodes and still be A-tier television. So that's what this is. This is still A-tier television, just like these I, These are my least favorite of the uh, premier pairs. Uh, I'd also like them to continue to expand on each individual's uh, uh, specific personal issues, like Rivers' uh, hangs up, hang ups over uh, believing that he belongs in the park. You know, Catherine Lamb's situation with her husband. Maybe introduce something interesting for Roddy. He's he's been very underserved, other than just being a creep. Like it would be nice if they could do something to make him a little bit more three dimensional. I know it's a lot to ask for in, in in just four episodes, but you know, maybe give a little bit more time to those things. You could spread that out over what is undoubtedly going to be several future seasons as well. Uh, but either way, I'll be a happy camper this season. So uh, let me know what you thought about these first two episodes in the comments. I will see you guys next week and every week thereafter covering this uh, full coverage of Slow Horses for the remainder of the season. Probably the last new show that I'm going to cover this year. So we can expect uh, after this to get a... Uh, I'm going to get Mike Musings 8 out for the Patreon. I am going to get... Uh, my favorite shows of all time video series. That's probably going to be coming out in December. And then we will have the best of 2023 in January. And I will see you guys next week for episode three. And until then, peace.